Hi friends, it's Envents. Welcome back to Metacraft. It is episode 11 of season 2, and last episode, we built the Great Lodge that we are currently standing in, and then proceeded to fill it with decorations, and pillagers, and people, and let me tell you what, between last episode and this episode, I got a bit carried away. <laughs> I did a bunch of off-screen building that I'm going to show to you guys right now, so let's go and fly right on outside, and BAM! Big deck in your face. It is a completely finished structure. It is just devoid of structures and decorations to fill it. So we're in the same spot with this build that we were in with the Great Lodge at the beginning of last episode. So that's something that we're going to work on. Let me fly away so you can get a full view of it and get the full scale because I think it looks really cool and hopefully you do too. So there it is. Voila. It has this little tiny side bridge here. You come up and then you can go to the side. And this I thought was going to be a problem with Callie's tree when she put it there in the beginning of the season, but it just so happened to be perfect it goes around it and then look at how close the actual deck gets to it it's actually one block away that's amazing i was so happy to see that i could keep Callie's build here it's definitely not a part of actual holbrock but is it it is a part of our holbrock and i love it and we're keeping it also here we have a little shulker box here that says happy holidays and it's got a whole bunch of potions in it as you can see so we're gonna get to use some of these at some point i'm sure and you can see in my inventory there's some other shulker boxes we had a secret santa and i got a bunch of good stuff look this shulker box is filled with skulk this has a bunch of different cool stuff that uh mini wheats was my secret santa he, he farms a bunch of stuff and he gave me some of it a whole shulker filled with totems of undying a whole shulker filled with firework rockets and then an entire shulker filled with stacks of shulker shells so i'm a lot more rich than i was between last episode and now as well uh so we're gonna take this and bring this with us and oh yeah i did one other thing i decorated the interior of the bear lodge now so we have our villagers out in these little trading pens i don't know what you want to call them i think it looks a lot homier than them being stuck in the walls over here <laughs> but we still have villagers stuck in the walls over here that's not going to change that's like that and we have a way to actually get up to the honey farm now as well and then we can go across to absolutely nothing so there we go we have the interior decorated of the bear lodge finally which leaves the only lodge to not be decorated on the inside which is wolf lodge which we will also do in this episode so there you go this episode is all about doing the interior of wolf lodge and the exterior of the great lodge we're actually going to start in Wolf Lodge because what we're going to build in here is going to make it so much easier for us to build all the other things we're going to build this season. Plus, I'm really excited about building it, but at the same time, I'm kind of depressed about it because, well, we're making a storage system in here. And that's great because it helps us stay more organized so we can get other builds done quicker. And I'm excited about that, but I'm depressed about it because, well... This world is over a year old, and we still don't have a storage system. We're just getting to it now, but I guess better late than never. Anyway, here's my plan. I want to put a big storage silo at the back to store all those items that we have in large quantities, and then I want to kind of put just different storage pods throughout the rest of this place. I don't plan to try and replicate what Wolf Lodge looks like in Guild Wars 2 for this part of Holbrock, which is kind of one of the first times we've done that with this whole thing, but I think it's necessary because I really need a place to put all my storage, and this is the spot. <laughs> So I built the storage silos and then used all these shulkers behind me to transport all the items from our temporary, uh, I guess I can't really call it the temporary storage cave that we were using since we were using it for 
the last year <laughs> but <laughs> we brought all those items that were down there over here and as you can see we have more of some items than others but that's okay i'm sure we're gonna accumulate more resources as the season continues to go on and then over here i added another little section for storage of andesite granite and diorite next i'm gonna build a couple of big storage pods here in the main area that we will use to store all sorts of different items and then in the side wings i'm gonna use that space to store all of the different colored blocks that you can have in the game so let's get to it so i was planning on showing much more of this process on camera than i ended up but i got pretty carried away between that last clip and this one and did a bunch of things off camera including building a brand new pc that i am currently playing and recording on right now so if this clip and the rest of the video looks different from the beginning of the video that's the reason why Hopefully it looks better than the beginning of the video because I spent a lot of money on this computer and it's a beast. I, it's amazing. It's helping me do a bunch of things better and faster than before, including building all the things that I was saying I wanted to build in the last clip. For example, these storage pods. These took about three different iterations. I always wanted this shape, but the redstone was the difficult part. I tried to use skulk sensors to get all fancy, but we just ended up going with levers here you flick the appropriate lever to open up the pod on that side and we just have item frames that indicate which items are stored in which chests and that helps us stay super organized there's still some item frames that are open because i actually don't have the items that i intend to store in those spots but see we've even got mob heads over here and then on this side down here, I put the storage for the colored blocks, like I said I was going to do. But as you can see, we don't even have all the colored blocks. So a cool little side quest for us for the rest of the season will be to make sure we do collect all the colored blocks and store them here. And then as we go over to the other side, you can see in the empty space here, I just put random barrels for miscellaneous storage. And on this side, we put an armory. We have all of the weapons here including like totems and shields for defense we've got armor and wings over here we've got the tools over here and then in these little holes we've got armor stands which don't have armor on them just yet but we intend to put armor on them of different types we'll have like a fire resist a blast protection suit we'll have a chain mail suit because hashtag two chains you know all that swag uh but yeah this took a little bit of figuring with the redstone as well. You would think it would have been just a simple double piston extender, but those move too fast and the block gets pushed into the armor stand. So I had to add a little bit of delay. I'm sure you could figure out how to do that yourself if you wanted to do it in your world, but if you really want me to, I'll make some pretty good tutorials. I could do that if you want me to. <laughs> but yes, now we are done setting up our storage area let's say goodbye to the armor stands because as long as they don't have armor on them i don't want to look at them <laughs> but now we can move on to finally building and filling up the great lodge deck so before i do anything to this area i want to explain a bit of my process to you of how i've kind of created all of holbrock at this point I basically just go into Guild Wars 2 and I spend an absurd amount of time in the area exploring and looking at all the different details of the build, the way it's shaped, the color of the different materials, where things are placed, and then I take an absurd amount of screenshots from different angles so that I have all those references that I can go into the game and try to get as close to that as possible. So what I'm going to be doing for the entire area here is lagging out, but then going back into the server to finish my explanation. Is I'm going to be referencing a bunch of screenshots I've taken and trying out different combinations of blocks to see what works, what is a combination of what looks closest to what is actually in the game of Guild Wars 2, and also what looks the best in Minecraft. So we get a happy 
medium of a good looking build in this game, but a close representation of what we have in the actual game that we are recreating, Guild Wars 2. So I'm going to do that and I will show you what we have when it's all done. And we're back and done with the build. For me, it was about a couple days, but for you guys, it was like, that was quick, let's go. Anyway, let's check out the build. And for this one, I'm not gonna do the fancy side-by-side -side Guild Wars 2 comparison that I did in the last video for the interior of the Great Lodge because what we did here, while it is close to what we have in Guild Wars 2, it's nowhere near as exact. So I figure we'll just kind of walk around and check things out. Naturally, uh, we have some areas here for crafting. It's just some tables here. A wandering trader came up to me while I was building this. And so his llamas are here, but he's not. I wonder why. So the armor stands are really fun to do, honestly. I originally wasn't going to use them very much when we added them to the server, but I had clear inspiration to use them within all of this cool stuff and i actually found it pretty easy to make these things cool like this so if you guys want to do it you can do it yourselves because i did it and i'm an idiot <laughs> we got these guys by the campfire wondering trader selling some stuff we'll go up to the top now because there's actually some extra structures that we built here because they're also in guild wars 2 this over here is a little building where they have the, <laughs> the black lion trading company in guild wars 2 which we made the black dragon trading company here in metacraft to uh represent that so here it would actually be in holbrock uh just some storage over here some guys here walk on over to this side and it's pretty much the exact same thing except the building is used for bankers on this side and what's this these aren't villagers wait these are our new friends we actually got a couple new friends on the server recently this is Machia, and this is apollyon x their links will be in the description along with all the other metacrafters please go and check out their channels please subscribe to them they are amazing people great new friends of ours that we will be playing minecraft with hopefully for years to come just like we have with the rest of our friends so yeah let's head on inside and start to wrap this video up. Before we do that, I have one more thing I want to talk to you about. Ow. That didn't hurt. So, basically, I really, really, really appreciate every single one of you that consistently watch my videos and comment on them and come to my streams to hang out and interact with me. And I want to show my appreciation for you guys by doing something that I've never done in Metacraft before, or in any of my series for that matter. And I want to give you guys the ability to insert yourselves into the Great Lodge or the deck outside by replacing one of the existing villager statues with your own Minecraft skin. That's right. You can become a part of Metacraft by going to my Twitch stream and following if you're not already because it is going to be a channel point redemption. There we call it meme score. So if you're not already following, go over there, follow, start gaining some meme score while you hang out. And eventually you'll be able to redeem yourself a statue and you can hang out in Metacraft forever and ever like one of us. What oh, are you what? doing? Oh my god, dude. What do you mean? I'm showing my base off to my friends. What are you doing? What's going on with your eyes? Don't change the subject. My eyes are fine. They're looking at someone who's slacking off on their job. Dude, what? Slacking off on their... I work really hard, dude. You must actually have something wrong with your eyes because you've got the wrong Do eye. Do not test me, Edmonds. Your job was to go to the deep dark and maintain the balance, not get swift sneak and ditch. Okay, well, you didn't really tell me what to do. Just like always, you were super unclear, and then you disappeared before I could ask you any questions. Can you at least tell me what you need me to do? Kill the warden as many times as you can and without fear of your own safety, because failure to do so will result in an even worse situation for me, the Shroud, and all of us. Dude, the warden? 
Are you out of your mind? The warden will eat me and my gear 20 times before I can even kill it once. Then that's 20 deaths in gear well spent. Look, dummy, I don't know if you understand basic math, but your gear won't matter if the world ends. Do your job. Uh, okay, jeez, you're so scary. Get me out of here. Oh, jeez. All right, I guess I gotta go die a bunch of times and lose all my gear. This'll be fun. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.